some games exist to bother you. Kind of. They want to get your goat, get under your skin, and maybe you can't beat them. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 frustrating games that are almost impossible to finish. Starting off at number 10, it's Jelly Mario. Jelly Mario is a game made by a dev who thought of something very interesting, let's just say. I mean, it is genuinely an interesting concept. What if everything in Mario was like Jello? Everything wiggle wiggles around like a Japanese cartoon of a woman. And that is the most frustrating possible way of playing Mario. Good luck, that's all I have to say. If you try to beat this, if you try to just be even patient enough to continue playing it, you're Jello, the ground is Jello, power-ups are Jello, everything is Jello, you bounce off of it, it's all malleable, it's really impossible to have like any sort of real forward momentum, and other than that, the goals are entirely the same, supposed to get to the end of the level. I've never gotten to the end of the level. It's free to try, though. Google it. I'll bet you won't either. And if you do, don't tell me, because I don't want to know. And number 9 is this voice-controlled game from the PlayStation 2 era called Lifeline. I, it was released under a different name in Japan, Operator Side, but, like, it's so frustrating if you're trying to play it, but if you're watching somebody play it, it's the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. Basically, you give this person voice commands as to what to do, and it, uh, it never works. It does not work properly. It is a game that just endlessly misinterprets what you're saying forever. Like, you can tell the character to look at something, the character won't look at something. The character might even take out a gun and start shooting that thing. Oftentimes it will misinterpret your voice commands as literally the opposite of the thing that you're saying. Like you'll say, look around room, and, it, and she'll be like, leave the room? Okay. And I'm not joking, that's like her demeanor too, that's what it sounds like. I forgot about this game entirely, but doing research for this video, like I can remember a friend of mine bought it because they thought it was cool. Like you could use your voice. And I went over to their house and no, you can't actually use your, I mean you have to use your voice, but the game does not actively care what you're saying it seems like. And number eight is Cat Mario. Now Cat Mario at first glance appears to be almost a normal game. It's basically a reinterpretation of Mario where you're a cat. It's not really cat dependent either. I think the person who made the game probably just didn't want to get sued or get the game taken down, which Nintendo's been known to do at times. Cat Mario has slightly more intense music than real Mario. It's not relaxing sounding, kind of more like Mega Man. And also, nothing behaves like you think it's going to behave by being conditioned by the original Mario to think, hey, this is what it's going to do. You might hit a question mark box, like, to get something to pop out of it, and instead of something popping out of it, the question mark box might just travel upward into the sky. Or perhaps an enemy might pop out of it. Also, after a moment or two, you notice that the physics are a little unwieldy, like you're just a little bit too fast, and it's a little awkward, but the further you go, like the more frustrating it gets, like you'll walk under some blocks or something and they'll just fall on you. Oh hey, great, love that. Basically, it's just a game that's designed to subvert your expectations of Mario and surprise you in various ways that kill you. And number seven, ironically enough, is Octodad. Octodad is a very stupid game, uh, intentionally. The plot of Octodad is that you are an octopus pretending to be a dad in a human family. You basically have to do household chores and fool everyone into thinking that you are uh, the real dad. Except you, I mean, nobody would be fooled by the Octodad. The Octodad looks like, uh, well, a, an octopus, and moves like, uh, well, an octopus. And given that you move like an octopus, everything you do in the game is hindered. It's very, very difficult to complete even simple tasks. Uh, there are people who get very frustrated playing the game, but I just, I, I can't help but just laugh the entire time I play Octodad. I don't know, games that are literally made as kind of a troll, they're automatically funny to me. And number six is Mount Your Friends, which the immediate thing you think about when you see this game is not really the difficulty level. It's that it seems like Q-Op or Quap or whatever you call that game. But the point is not simply to walk, but to build a tall mountain of people, all of which who have package physics, let's say. I'm not going to assign a value judgment to that aspect of the game. Whatever you like, it's, it's for you to like or not like. But it is actually a really hard game. If you try it, it's frustrating and weird. Very weird, because it's not, it doesn't really behave like you think it will. It should, and yeah, you looking at this footage, you do understand how to play the game already. But, I mean, you really have to figure out how to get momentum going. If you don't, I mean, you really don't win. And you're forced to look at this forever. Oop, back and forth, back and forth. That's what you do when you don't win. And number five is Superman 64, which 
I mean, yeah. According to the developer, this was basically one of those games where they were really not given the opportunity to thrive during the development process. And that's putting it in a nice way. The licensor apparently did not want Superman to be able to kick real people in the game. Kick, you know, not really one of Superman's powers, but like a normal thing in almost any game where you fight people barehandedly. Kick is generally the more powerful attack. And you know, that's not what's wrong with the game. I mean, that's a very small sample of it, but this is a buggy, badly designed game that is so irritating to play. Not even necessarily frustrating, but like grating. If you take it seriously and want to get real enjoyment out of it, it will make you upset. However, if you go in with that specific expectation, it's also possibly one of the funniest games you've ever played in your life. Like any game that's attempted to be funny on purpose, not even close. And number four is Surgeon Simulator, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it could be more aptly named Drunk Surgeon Simulator, because that's pretty much the only way the experience of surgery, performing surgery, doing a surgery would be anything like this game. The controls are not particularly responsive, let's say. The game itself is designed around this idea that it's stupid, it's an intentionally stupid game, or at least that's how I've always understood it, and viewing it through that lens has made it enjoyable for me. And to be fair, I have seen people take it seriously where they actually get good at it. Being good at it, by the way, is essentially just understanding the weird quirks of the controls of this game, and being able to compensate for them. But it's not like Operation Unfair. The board game Operation is kind of unfair and very difficult, more so than it needs to be, but it's much more than that. It doesn't work right. And number three is Quop. Like I said, I don't, I've never really known how to pronounce it. I've called it Q-Op in the past, but it's apparently Quop. Quop is a very silly game. You basically have to try to walk. It is not a, like, accurate walking simulator. You have thigh and calf controls, and it does not work like you expect it to work. It doesn't work, in fact. I mean, it technically works. It does exactly what it sets out to do, but it's very difficult. It's very frustrating, and if you attempt to play it like you think it's probably supposed to be played, you just get to frustrate yourself. I mean, some people get good at it. I'm not going to pretend that people don't, but it's not a game that, like, you need to count on beating in order to enjoy. And number two is Trap Adventure 2, which is very similar to Cat Mario in a lot of ways. Albeit, it's a little less subversive and more just angry and punishing. Basically, it's, it's, I mean, the title accurately describes what it is. It's an adventure in which traps are abound. Every single movement almost seems to trigger a trap. Like I said, it's less subversive and more angry than Cat Mario. Cat Mario is frustrating, but Trap Adventure 2, it's, um... It's frustrating and a little bit demoralizing. I can get a laugh or two out of Cat Mario, but I don't out of Trap Adventure. And finally, at number one, it's getting over it with Bennett Foddy. This is a dumb physics game in which you use a hammer to, I guess, traverse terrain. Now looking at it, it really doesn't look like it'd be that difficult, but it is. There are so many puzzles that this game throws at you that are just dumb, they're silly, and the whole thing features commentary of the developer, Bennett Foddy, talking about philosophy, which is kind of taunting. I, I, don't, I don't really know if he meant it as taunting. It's kind of just actual, just literal philosophical discussion, but it feels like taunting. Anyways, it's a little less impossible than other games on this list. I mean, I've finished this game. But I will also say that it's one of the games that gave me probably the most frustration at times. Maybe not the whole way through, but it really spiked my blood pressure at times. <laughs> Couple of bonus games for you. First, Stilt Fella, which is a very stupid walking game in which you walk with stilts. It's, I mean, not a simulator. It's very much something that's built to be difficult, irritating, and silly. In some ways, it, it, it has a bit of a quap feel to it. Next one is Unfair Mario, which the name says it all. It's a lot like Trap Adventure, but an actual Mario game in that you actually play as Mario. And finally, The Unfair Platformer, which, again, very much a Trap Adventure type game. A lot of things turn into spikes in The Unfair Platformer. A lot of things. Well, what games have you played that are particularly unfair, frustrating, and so on? Leave us a comment.